Here, let me get this set up. We'll be here all night if your dumbass is in charge. All right, so what are we looking for? I want to steer. No. Move, I'm steering. Ow. Jeez, May. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. How do we do this? Uh, step one, look at the screen. Step two, move around and look at stuff. Step three, find ghost. Sure. Spectra happenings at Possum Jump. Two local sweethearts were startled this past Sunday night as they hiked along the wooded overlook known as Possum Jump. According to the lovebirds, at approximately 11.45pm, a figure appeared to walk from the edge of the cliff out into the open air and then disappeared. Forestry workers the next morning were unable to locate any evidence of anyone having left from a great height, leaving the exact nature of what the two saw a mystery. A decent hike up into the state... State Forest Hills, Possum Jump is famous for its beautiful view of the Echo Reservoir. It also holds historical importance as it hosts the lonely graves of several persons involved in the Possum Massacre. Possum Massacre? Oh, there's a lot. I love this. Oh, local ghost Little Joe at it again. Local ghost Little Joe at it again. As the school children are quick to inform you, Possum Springs has at least one resident who won't show up on any census survey. Little Joe, purportedly the ghost of Joe Shade, a miner who died in mysterious circumstances some decade ago, decades ago, is a favorite spook story of the whimsical and weird members of our community. His most recent activities seem to involve getting up out of his coffin in the old section of Possum Springs Cemetery and strolling around, unnerving visitors to the largest to the largest graveyard in Deep Hollow County. His grave has become a destination for unruly and often destructive local youths. And as such, Possum Springs City Council is considering erecting an iron gate to protect the historical tombstones that fill the small hollow where Joe Shade lies buried. Police have also stepped up patrols in the area, so be warned, thrill seekers. You may not see a ghost, but you may see a fine for trespassing. Is there like a... Oh, okay. Ooh, look! Scooch so I can see. Graveyard. That's a gimme. I mean, if you're looking for ghost stuff. That's where they make a lot of them. Looks like they saw him in the old section. Oh cool, that's where his grave is. I'm actually interested in that. How could you not be interested? This is like actual dangerous ghost stuff. I like history. Ghosts are history. History that won't stay history. <laughs> that's actually pretty good. All right, cool. Then let me go back and click the one that was down here. Uh, oh, yep. Hey, look at this. Hmm, yeah. Looks like Possum Jump? Let me read it. It's Possum Jump. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's back up in the state park, right? Yeah. Ever been up there? Nope. Gonna check it out, though. Go nuts. That's actually probably only a mile or so from Mrs. Miranda's house. Back up in the hills. All kinds of stuff up there. Well, I'll try to avoid any basements. Or corpse husbands. Co-signed. Sound off, opinion line. We would like to remi remind the men of our town. Wait, if I could just click on random things and not just ghost things. We would like to remind the men of our town to please refrain from spitting on the sidewalk. This unsanitary habit is unsanely and beneath you. Parents, please be sure your daughters are not participating in the new trend of skirts showing the ankles. I do not think we need to remind you which road of Brimstone this temporary fashion trend will lead your dear daughters down. I've been witnessing more and more teenage girls coming into our town on Saturday night, unchaperoned, using vulgar slang terms, certainly unfit for me to print here, and blocking the sidewalks by walking arm in arm. They are loud and also flirt with boys un unabashedly while smoking cigarettes. These young ladies need to be stopped before our young ladies get any idea, ideas or our boys fall in with the wrong girl. Young men have been seen around Possum Springs engaging in their ridiculous behavior of wearing mismatched patterns in their suits. This type of outfit may be all the rage in Bright Harbor, Harbor but good luck getting any respectable businessmen around here to employ you. You all look like rabid clowns. Councilman Puchinskaya's plan for Third Street is a joke. What else is there to say? Hmm, this is interesting, but yeah, not exactly about a ghost. Ghostly rumors haunt new historical society. Possum Springs Historical Society's con con conversion of the Schreigeist House into its new headquarters and education center has a hit a snag. Custodial head Jed Newsom has resigned, citing strange occurrences in the old manor. I'd be there after hours doing my work and I'd hear someone walking around trying doorknobs. I came out to see who was fooling, but there was never nobody there, said Newsom. Trying to get this map room operational for the children all the while I'm looking over my shoulder expecting to see God knows what. 
Mr. Newsom had previously requested to work only daylight hours when other staff were present in the building, but even that proved to be too terrifying. I don't go to the off-limits area anymore, I don't go up past the second floor, and then only go to the office. I know there's laugh, say I'm seeing Little Joe or something, but they can all go spit. Little Joe, for those uninitiated, was a local ghost story popular some years ago. The Boston Springs Historical Society has refused to comment on Mr. Newsom's claims at this time. Hey, hey, hey! Ghost spotted. Historical Society? History that won't stay history. In a history place! History place. Yeah, I've never been. You didn't go back in school? I think this was when I wasn't in school. Oh, after the softball incident. Yeah, mostly just watched TV and did therapy. Well, it's actually a pretty cool old house. Used to be owned by one of the mine owners or something. Railroad, mine, steel mill, something like that. An actual haunted house? Uh, no. Elementary school kids are there all the time. They have, like, summer arts and crafts programs. Oh, well, still worth checking out. Okay, well that's like three leads. Let's boogie. Let's boogie? Also, is that it? Now let's look at more stuff. I want to read all of this, but also I don't want to read out loud because my throat hurts. I'll read every other one, but the rest I'm just going to read to my head because my throat really does hurt. I shouldn't- I should just stop trying to talk for three hours straight. Okay, editing Aurora here to read all the things that I didn't read before. Uh, because why not? That, that way you don't have to read things, you just gotta listen. Ain't that fun? Alright, here I go. Strike lumbers on. The strike is now in its 30th day with no end in sight. The bosses have refused to meet with the miners saying their demands are too fantastical. The miners claim they are only asking the bosses to adhere to safety standards that are already in the law. The National Guard was called in after last week's scuffle, and the Coulson Coke Works Union has joined the cause, which has caused an uptick in national press arriving at the site. The women's camp has expanded its services from serving meals to beating any non-union miner from entering the mines. <laughs> so far, they have been successful in both ventures. No ghosts to be found here. The way you say ghost, it sounds like you don't believe me. The Stanley, Stanley T. Possum statue has officially opened to the public, and we have to say we are smitten. For two cents, one can enter Stanley and spend quite a little time looking the Possum Springs of yesteryear time looking the pos looking at the possum springs of yesteryear in the museum enjoying some popped corn and fresh lemonade in the snack parlor decorated with tiffany glass electric lights before heading up to heading up a full 10 feet to see the sights of our beloved town through the eyes of this grand possum there is even a beautiful train diorama that will delight both young and old we predict stanley t possum will be a sight that all passing through our town will desire to behold and we will and will be sure to draw many crowds this one no ghost Underground gases affect many. The houses on Larch Street have been evacuated after the discovery of gas buildup in the basements was found to have led to hallucinations in scattered members of the households. For the past several weeks, residents have been complaining of family members who began hearing voices or seeing things that were not there. One older woman was found to was found having an animated discussion with an empty chair. When pressed, she calmly explained that she was t talking to her sister, who had passed away some 50 years ago. Two nights ago, the son of Carson Zimmer ran out of the house and leapt into Cooper's Pond a one mile up the road. Moments before this, the child had been readying for bed and, according to another sibling, became increasingly agitated. The last words he uttered were about some sort of song before he dashed out of the house and into the night, where his watery grave awaited him. This last event persuaded residents to request help from officials to see if this is related to St. Leuven's Lantern, a phenomenon where exposure to specific underground gases leads certain victims to experience waking dreams, auditory hallucinations, and a sense of unseen presences. Preliminary tests indicate that gas is present in the homes and mining officials are moving the residents until more tests can be completed. No ghosts here. Okay. You're not gonna say anything about people seeing things? I... There has been another sighting of the albino groundhog from a very reliable source this time. Edgar Struder reports that he saw the pure white beast digging near Shade Gap. Mr. Studer has declined to give any more of an exact location and implores his fellow hunters to admire this anomaly from afar and leave him to his business. We could not agree more with this upstanding citizen and remind townsfolk that if you are interested in seeing an albino creature, just stop by Suddy's Barbershop for a peek at an albino raccoon. We're certain this will assist your mind in completing the search for the groundhog. Click. No ghost here. 
Progress Springs in Possum Springs. Randolph Stafford, owner of the Bell's Hole Mine Works, has partnered with Samuel Coulson, owner of Coulson Coke Works, Daniel Glick, Railroad Magnet, and prominent business owner Harrison Schreigeist to make some stunning improvements throughout the town. The four men desired to build a model of progressive living right here in Possum Springs. The old miners' double houses on Elm Street will be torn down and replaced with spacious single homes. A new elementary school will be opened nearby, along with a new state-of-the-art recreation center courtesy of Arnold Applebaum. This is in addition to improvements Randall Stafford promised the previously striking miners. Alright, so I'm just getting the same thing, so I'll just wait until I actually see something about ghosts. The Stanley T. Possum statue, known by residents as Posse, is finally slated for demolition. Posse closed in 1967, but Richard Coulson, son of Samuel, had hopes of refurbishing the statue for new generations. Posse stood silent for close to 60 years, witnessing the beginnings of the of the demise of the railroad, the mines, and the coke works that ushered in his existence. Teens and other vandals broke into Posse over the years, and climbing up through Posse became a rite of passage for many young people in the area. Residents have been torn over what to do with the beloved but derelict structure over the, 30, over the years, but three years ago, pressure began mounting to have it torn down. A storm knocked off Posse's ear, and the next year, Ralph Jenkins fell from the staircase and broke both legs. Samantha Coulson and Glick, daughter of Richard, finally agreed that it was time for Posse to go. The demolition will begin at 12 p.m. on Saturday, and viewing areas will be set up at a safe distance. Pie Piracy Dear citizens, please make note to keep your pies safe during the pleasant weather we are experiencing. Several ladies have reported pies from their kitchens disappearing at alarming rates. Even worse, the picky culprit is leaving behind only the rhubarb pies. Until this criminal is caught or the bad weather returns, we remind our housewives to make use of their pie safes indoors or stick to rhubarb. Strike. A strike at the Stafford Mine has been called. The idea first arose after the memorial for the 1888 explosion victims. Miners gathered in the home of Arthur Borowski to continue the memorial to their friends. They also began recounting all of the promises the bosses have reneged on this past year, including basic safety measures to avoid another explosion. A group of 20 miners entered the mines to begin the strike, and 30 more joined them before morning. All work has been stopped at the mine, and the miners are now striking in 8-hour shifts. Their wives and children have begun to bring food and water for the men. The bosses have stated that the mines are safer than they were a year ago, and that there is no need to act in this manner. New Old Store in Town Center the Old Pickaxe Hardware Store is set to have its grand opening this Saturday. We've received a sneak peek of the store yesterday, and our town will benefit greatly from this new addition. Roy Burge is bringing 25 years of building experience into his new venture and has stocked the shelves with all the nuts, bolts, and nails you would need for any project, plus the latest in tools. Stop by to see the latest trends in everything from hand saws to hammers. Best of luck to Mr. Burge. Possum Massacre. Severe violence broke out at the Stafford Mine Strike today. The bosses arrived to attempt to renew talks and were taunted by some of the children present. Rocks were thrown in the National Guard and strike breakers opened fire on the crowd. After a few minutes, the smoke cleared and the gory scene revealed. Nine miners are dead with a dozen or more injured. A young brother and sister were also shot dead as they were delivering a package of food to their father and uncle who were on strike below when the shooting broke out. The photograph of the two children, aged seven and nine, who were shot in the in cold blood has circulated far outside of our little county. The heinous act led to a personal visit from the governor to the strike site to meet with the strikers. Independent inspectors were also brought in and the talks finally began, 45 days since the start of the strike. The bosses have agreed to comply to the current safety standards and to honor the demands of the miners. Okay, well that doesn't count, I guess. Tale of Teeth? Strange but true, a tale of teeth. Strange But True is our ongoing series about the weird and forgotten aspects of Deep Hollow County history and culture, published weekly. Bad bosses figure heavily into Possum Springs history, and this morbid tale of crime and secret societies is no exception. The story goes, in 1870, a local mine boss was skimming workers on their pay. A group of miners confronted him while he was in the act. He denied everything, with many a slur, and punched the miners' leader, Darnell Glace, in the face causing him to lose his last remaining tooth. The miners knew how much Darnie's tooth meant to him, and they descended on the boss. A few held the boss down while the others removed all of his teeth with pliers. The teeth were passed out to the miners, and a secret society was created with a vow to protect the workers' interests. Membership was based on owning one of these teeth, and each was marked with a symbol of their choosing. These symbols were used around the coal patch to organize meetings and make announcements. The boss survived his attack, but never named his attackers for fear of implicating himself. 
When died a few years later, members dug up his grave to retrieve his skull. It was used in ceremonies performed before going out for retribution. All would gather round, place their teeth into the sockets, and later retrieve their tooth after the retribution was completed. Upon a member's death, their tooth would be passed to a new member. Teeth of members in jail would be left in their sockets until their fates were decided. After the strike of 1889, the society dwindled. Occasionally, a descendant of one of these men will find a tooth with strange markings in their bone. Strange, but true. Oh wow, this is gnarly. And awesome. <laughs> oh my god. You have a tooth! You have a tooth from a dead boss! Deep Hollow County mourns. The final group of bodies from the 1888 explosion have been recovered, two days shy of their one year anniversary of the tragedy. These five men bring the total dead to 112. Two of the men, Addison Pine and Henry Harvey, were the ones who set off the explosion. Although mine bosses have been informed that gas pockets are present in that section, they elected to not inform Pine and Harvey of the possible danger. The other three bodies belong to Peter Bledsoe, Christian Stanoff, and Peter L La 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 Latha. Lajtha. Lajtha. Peter L's funeral arrangements will be handled by Father Lidditz as the man's widow has since returned to Hungary with his two orphans. Okay. Events. The last trolley will make its run September 4th. Bernie Goss, the longest employee with 25 years as an operator, will pick up passengers starting at the Market Street Tunnel entrance and will end at the trolley garage where light refreshments will be served and a speech will be given by the Congressman Archibald Reed. Twin Club will be meeting at the Stags on Wednesday night at 6pm. This month's craft will be knitted hats for the soldiers along with a potluck. All mothers of twins of any age are welcome. Tragedy at Stafford Mine. 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 An explosion occurred at 6.20 a.m. at the Stafford Mine. All work has ceased while men attempt to rescue any survivors. So far, three men have been pulled out alive along with 20 dead. The explosion occurred 10 miles deep in the mine and only one group of men were able to escape before the elevator's rope snapped and the next group of men plummeted to their death. So far, hopes of finding more survivors is low. The main path to the tunnel caved in due to the explosion and supervisors are still attempting to piece together exactly where everything was, everyone was during the accident. Samuel Coulson has purchased 10 acres of land on the outskirts of Possum Springs. When we inquired as to what Mr. Coulson would use the land for, he would only remark that what was coming here would delight both young and old for years to come. We are very anxious to be delighted. Alright, I think that's everything. Cool. So we've got some leads. Can I borrow your car this week? Do you even have a license? I mean, no, regardless, but do you? Nope. No license, no credit cards, don't believe in money. You just believe in other people's cars and money. I didn't choose to be born into this society. Okay, well, I have, you know, a job, so I can't drive you around to all of these spots. I can maybe do the graveyard? I need to go there anyway. Cool, I'll see if Greg wants to do the other two. You know, like, and I probably don't have to say this, but just because something happened in the past, doesn't mean it's going to happen again. Hey nerd, ever hear that history repeats? It does. It does the same thing over and over again. So we've just been in a loop since we were living in caves? Yeah, that's science. Oh my freaking god. Ahem. <clears throat> what is... Is that Miss Quelsey? Oh wow, haven't seen her since graduation. She was always kind of a badass. School district did not fund that art program at all. But she made it work. She was like some sort of art teacher survivalist. Wow, I never realized. I think they pay her in bits of string and empty soda cans. Should be saving that string to repair those bridges into Saltstown. There you go. Thank you all for coming to the second meeting of the Possum Springs Poetry Society. Do you want to stick around for this? Yeah. Tonight we have new poems from myself, and Fisherman Jones, and Selma Ann Forrester. I will start us off with one of my own. She's from some big city, right? They don't actually pay her a string, right? Some big city, right? Yeah. How'd she end up here? Who knows? <clears throat> Letter to my worst student. To my worst student. 
The subject of my stories I tell friends back home when they ask about life out here in the sticks. It's you, I worry, at the end of my life. You'll be the only one I remember. Why did you key my car? I know it was you, Brian. Thanks, everyone. Is that legal? Poor Miss Quelsey. Poor Miss Quelsey. At least she's blowing off some steam. Next up, Fisherman Jones. Fisherman Jones has a poem for us. Two. Two poems. They're short, though. Two poems! Take it away. Uh, hi, folks. Thanks. This is called Tunnel Eels. Tunnel eels, tunnel eels, I do not know how it feels to be in darkness all the time, born in muck and raised in slime. But neither do you know paths I've trudged, so it hardly is your place to judge. Okay, that's one poem. The next is shorter. This is called Tunnel Frogs. Tunnel Frogs... Tunnel frog swims in the dark. Must think it would be a lark. To be a fisherman like me. But what do you know, amphi amphibie? That's it. That's great. Thank you, Fisherman Jones. Dude just really worried about what fish think. He definitely talks to the actual fish. He definitely talks to the actual fish. Oh, most definitely. Finally, a poem by Selma Ann Forrester. Yay, Selmers! Thanks, May. You know her? Dude, she's like your neighbor. Oh. She writes these really funny dorky short poems. I love her something short and funny. This is called There's No Reception in Possum Springs. <laughs> she's not wrong. <clears throat> no reception here. I wave my black phone. In the air like a flare, like a prayer, but no reception. I read on the internet, babyface boy, billionaire. Phone app sold, made more money in one day than my family in oh than my family over a hundred generations. More than my whole world ever has. World where house buying jobs become rent paying jobs become living with family jobs. Boy billionaires. Money is access, access to politicians waiting for us to die, lead in our water, alcohol, and painkillers. Replace my job with an app. Replace my dreams of a house and a yard with a couch in the basement. The future is yours. Force 24 seven entrepreneurs. I just want a paycheck in my own life. I'm on the couch in the basement, there in the house in the yard. Some night I will catch a bus out to the west coast and burn their Silicon City to the ground. Holy shit. Wow. Damn. Huh. She rhymed entrepreneur? I don't even know what that word means. Thanks, everyone. Is she always like this? No. Wow. Huh. Thanks, everyone. See you in two weeks. Hey, Selmers. What? I liked your weird poem. Thanks, I wrote it myself. Wait, was the assumption that she didn't write it her s Nice work, Smelber. I don't like that nickname. Where are you two? Sorry. It's cool. Can we go now? <laughs> okay, thanks for coming. We live here. Right, so, find out anything about your ghost? Yeah, tell them me. There were some newspaper clippings that talked about a ghost. Not just any ghost, Little Joe. I don't really remember Little Joe. He's a ghost miner. He died in mysterious circumstances. Wow. I know, right? Mysterious. I thought you were, like, afraid of this ghost. Like, filled with, like, dread and shit. I'm terrified. Okay. So it mentioned three different places we can all check out. Uh, I have work and stuff. Yeah, Greg and I also have work. You guys skip out on work all the time. Maybe we can, like, split this up. Share custody of you and your ghost. What places were you thinking about? Uh, the graveyard? I call that one. It's close and not illegal. Is there an illegal one? Sure is, the historical society. You know you don't have to, like, break in. The people there, like, get paid to show it to you. Anyway. I'm in for the historical society. Awesome. So what did I get stuck with? Possum Jump. I know Possum Jump. We used to go there in Scouts. Perfect. Okay, I need to like actually get home and do work. This is gonna be awesome. And also I'm scared to death. Ta-da, it's Selmers, a good poet. Thought, if I die, Selmers should write a poem about it. Uh, 
<sighs> yeah, seems like that's going around. Dear. Uh, yeppers. So, uh, you and Mom had a bit of a fight yesterday, yeah? Yeah. I thought you two were getting along. We were. We are. We are. Just a bump. You two. Always two alike. I guess. I got your chill and her smart assness. I just hate to see you two on the outs again. It'll be fine. We're cool. So, we're having money problems? What? No, we're fine. Dad. May, it's fine. It's okay. I'm 20. I can handle it. Nothing to handle. Okay. Might just head up to bed tonight. Sounds good, kid. Been a long couple of days. Hey, May. Let me know when you want to go to the park. I looked up a map and it's pretty straight. It's a pretty straight shot up to Possum Jump. Okay, great. We never really got a chance to hang out. Get a chance to hang out. It'll be fun, I think. Okay, I'm going to sleep. Night, sir. Tips hat. Yo, I looked up the Historical Society on the internet. It's real old, but then they did big renovations. Oh, really? I mean, listen, I'm not saying there's a ghost, but old stuff that just got torn up seems like Ghost Central. How so? You're a ghost hanging out in an old house, and then someone puts in a pool where you died or something? Haunted pools would be would be actually pretty scary. I'm spooked. I'm going to bed. Hey, let me know when you want to hit the cemetery. I should be around most nights this week. I don't know. Thanks, B. Don't thank me too hard. I'm going there anyway, and it's like right down the road. You're ruining this. Oh, in that case, you are so incredibly welcome, and also you better not forget this big favor. That's more like it. I'm falling asleep. Had fun tonight. Sorry if I was grouchy. It's just... It's, just, it's fine. Wait, did you fall asleep? Full. Mm. <laughs> Alright. Bedtime. Bedtime? Yeah. another dreamscape and I think that is about where I'm going to end it today because my throat is wrecked da 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 <laughs> um oh I hope I didn't hit anything all right um thanks to everyone for stopping by oh what's that a swim fish what the heck is going on I'm excited to see what's happening next um, but yeah, thanks to everyone who stopped by, everyone who chatted. Um, I hope you all have a lovely day. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> have a good one.